So back in the camper today, I've spent quite a bit of time in here. The more time I spend in here, the more I like it. First of all, this is a very old camper and it's been abused quite a bit. It is not roadworthy. The tires are good, but all the outside lights are damaged or missing. There's a, some uh, of the siding outside has separated, so we got to fix that. They used a bungee cord when we bought it. They were using a bungee cord to hold all this together. So it's not roadworthy. When I bought it, I specifically said, what I did was there's a community close to us. And I went to their Facebook group and I said, has anybody got a camper for sale? It does not need to be roadworthy. It just needs to be usable inside. And the guy said, yeah, I got one. And he delivered it. We paid a little bit more than I would have liked to pay for it. But since he was delivering it, really couldn't beat it. Now, a lot of people keep asking me if I'm going to move it up the hill where I said I was going to move it when we first got it here. Carolyn said, no, let's leave it here. She likes it here. And we got to measuring the easement. And there's enough easement space because we got to keep an easement for the electric company, which I guess I'll have to explain again. We bought the property and it's got an electric line coming through it. So we have to keep an easement which reduced the price of the property. I know a lot of people seem to think that you gotta be so far away from everything, you're not off grid and all that, it's just blah, blah, blah. I'm not hooked up to the electric. As a matter of fact, right now this camper is hooked up to the solar panels as well as our house. And you can see that I'm, I'm running some stuff, uh, the microwave, I'll show you around here in a little bit. Let's see if I can hit the start. I don't know if you can hear that, but it's running. That's off solar panels. And my batteries and we got the 2000 watt inverter now yesterday carolyn was running the vacuum cleaner and i started the well the well takes 800 watts so you also have that peak startup and it just wouldn't start the well with the vacuum cleaner running but that's okay if we're using this camper if somebody were to come visit which would, i don't think anybody's ever going to come visit my dad might come down here but i'm not even sure he'll spend the night he usually just comes and spends the day and then leaves and then goes to visit with his sister. But Carol and I have been brainstorming all day on what we're going to do with it. Talking about how we're going to seal up the windows so it's a little bit warmer inside. We talked about buying a blue flame heater, but have decided that we're just going to use the buddy heater. If we ever have to move in here for any reason during the winter, then maybe we'll get a blue flame heater. We found out today that everything works on the stove. I didn't show you this before, but I can light the, the stove top. And then I told you that the oven wasn't working. Couldn't get the oven to work. The pilot light worked, but the oven wasn't working. And I thought it had something to do with the thermostat. I guess that's not true. Cause today I lit the pilot light. I lit all the burners. I turned the stove on high. And I went out and looked at the furnace to see if I could figure out how that worked. I just wanted to see if everything was working while I was down here. That way if there's a propane leak, I could have figured out what was going on. Came back in, the stove lit. I let it all cool down. I told Carolyn, hey, the stove works. So we came back down later and I tried to light the stove again. The pilot light was on and it didn't light and didn't light and didn't light. And then all of a sudden, I don't know, a couple minutes later, it lit. Some sort of safety device I would imagine on it. I don't know, but it works. So when I came back in from working on the furnace, it was just boiling hot in here. So that actually could be used somewhat as a heater, somewhat. I know everybody's gonna say, yo, you can't do that, it's dangerous, carbon monoxide. We have a carbon monoxide detector and I got it sitting right next to it just in case. We got the window open. And I got to thinking about it. We had a pop-up camper that we lived in. We traveled as nomads, that's where we first started. And it couldn't have been any bigger than this carpeted area, that pop-up camper. Now remember, it's a tent. Half of the top, you know, the top is a tent. And we kept it warm with a buddy heater. And when we were plugged up to electric, we had one of those little space heaters, electric space heaters. I mean, they're real small. It kept it warm. And that was in the wintertime in Missouri. So it can be done. So I would imagine this is gonna be easy to, to heat. <laughs> this is putting out so much heat right now. It's incredible. I asked Carolyn, are you going to use the oven now I got it to work? We've got two pot roasts that we've had pork that we've had in the freezer ever since we got the freezer. 
And we've been talking about using a pressure canner to cook them and then freeze the meat after it's cooked. And she said, well, now the oven's working. I'll just put them in the oven. That way we won't have to use the canner. So I see a lot of potential with this. But the furnace, I'm sure works. The thermostat's here, it's working. You know, I can turn it on. I just don't know how to operate the furnace. I know it runs off DC. I didn't have my glasses on when I was down there playing with it. There's a set of instructions. So I'm sure somebody in the comment section is gonna tell me how to do it. I'm, I probably can find it a YouTube video. But we got to thinking about it. Now remember, we're running off solar panels. So the solar panels make DC electric, goes to the batteries. The batteries go to the inverter. The inverter changes that to the AC electric. And then it comes here, and depending on the appliance that you're running, it could be AC, it could be DC. So for example, this, fan here runs off DC. So it literally, I changed it from DC to AC to DC. Now the fridge runs off AC. So you, these are all little things you can figure out. Fortunately, there's a breaker down here that can shut off the DC converter. So it, it converts AC electric to DC electric, whereas the inverter changes DC electric to AC electric. So I had to figure all that out. I think this is to the water pump. I think, I'm not entirely sure. The water pump works, but the tanks are all disconnected. Every one of the tanks is disconnected. That being said, I just looked and the shore water, where you can screw your hose in, works. But I don't think we're gonna use it. The sink won't work because we don't have shore water hooked up to it. But I do have my water heater. Now I know when Carolyn's son was here, we could have done a lot of things, but we were trying to give him his privacy, so we just got it set up the best we could. So we have our on-demand water heater here, just like the one we have at the house. Runs off propane. So we hooked it up where a hose came in. We can turn on the hose. It comes out of my IBC tank, the same one the house runs on. A. I don't know if you can see that, but water is running. The light needs a new light bulb, so otherwise I would turn on the light. So now my RV pump at my IBC tank was running. You can hear it in the house when it's running when that is on. So that gave us hot water. This does have a water heater. I'm pretty sure this is the water heater. But it's like a two gallon water heater. There's not much water in it at all. So I don't see that being used. We'll use the on-demand water heater. If we want to do dishes, just continue to do dishes like we were doing them, or her son was doing them. Fill up a bucket, fill the sinks, and you can wash it that way. But it came with a lot of neat stuff like the microwave two coffee pots, a brand new toaster. And it doesn't look like this toaster's ever been used. It's 700 watts, and we're running a 2,000 watt inverter, so we got plenty of power to run that. So if we ever had guests, it is feasible that we could, could make a breakfast that they would enjoy. Of course, we eat bacon and eggs, but we never eat toast. Now, they have an air conditioner, but I don't have anything powerful enough to run it. I can turn on the fan on this thing, but when I turn on the air conditioner, it shuts off. So I, I would turn it on so you could hear it. Oh wait, I can do it this way. So you can hear the fan, you can see it blowing. So I got enough power to run that, but as soon as I turn it on the air conditioner, the inverter shuts off. So that's okay. I'm gonna shut the breaker off here because we have that window air conditioner I showed you the other day. That's a little 5,000 BTU air conditioner, it runs 500 watts, so we can run that as well. But again, if we're hooked up to solar on this thing, if somebody were to come visit, we wouldn't be able to run the well. If we had a visitor, I would have to run the well off the generator or hook up the camper to the generator. What's somebody gonna visit for? A few days? It wouldn't cost too much to run the generator full time. But on the other hand, you don't really wanna run in while you're sleeping, so. I keep thinking about my daughter I think there's a potential that she could come down and visit us when she gets settled in better in her life. I mean, right now she's so busy getting college degrees and working and working on her master's or whatever it is. She just doesn't have a lot of time to visit. 
but her and her husband could come down which i guess kind of reminds me about the bedroom we finally got this cleaned out her son wasn't sleeping in here he was sleeping on the couch when he was here but the mattress pretty good shape it's not stained up or anything so she hasn't cleaned this room yet so we'll get it all disinfected and cleaned up i've got mouse traps i know you can't probably see it but i got mouse traps lying all over the place i caught one but for the last two days i have not seen any more mouse droppings it's got some nice closets so we'll be able to store a lot of our stuff in here get some of the stuff out of the tiny house the propane tank we can put in here for the on-demand water heater i'm sure somebody's going to say that's a bad setup we got the on-demand water heater when we could just run everything off the regular propane tank outside that's hooked up to the camper but the on-demand water heater puts out so much more hot water endless it will put out as much hot water as propane you can feed it so it just doesn't run out it's a big joke when carolyn and i are taking a shower she'll get done with shower said you use all the hot water and of course you can shake the tank nope <laughs> the uh, propane tank she's been spending an enormous amount of time out here cleaning I told you in yesterday's video we're gonna can out here and I'm gonna put the Coleman can stove over the sink because when we're canning chicken it spills over because we're cooking the chicken that way it can just drain into the sink I had plumbing running out to the septic which I didn't never have showed you guys but I had plumbing running out to it I've disconnected that because it was in the way of the easement. I didn't want that to be an issue. So when he left, I disconnected that. And we got a bucket underneath the drain. Now, the tanks don't work, so there is no toilet. It's kind of a problem if we had a visitor. So I've really enjoyed this. I'm glad we got it. But like I said, it's old. You can see that there's a lot of rot. And that I think we can fix. I think a lot of this is fixable. I, I, I see Carolyn, well, she's even expressed it, that she's kind of disappointed in the camper she thought it was in better shape there's a little bit of rot around here it use it seems like the rot is normally around the windows my guess is, is either they leak a little bit or they left the windows open for a few years and it rained inside and rotted all that stuff so what we'll do is the next time it rains we'll come out here we'll check see if everything see if anything's leaking now this is a regular refrigerator i don't have it plugged up we did test it just a few minutes ago but it's just it's not a propane refrigerator and i'm trying to figure out if we'd ever use it I, i've come to the conclusion if we butcher chickens or if we're going to can usually when i what i have to do is when we go to grocery shopping we go grocery shopping early in the morning we put all the meat in the freezer but that night i have to run the generator because the freezer runs three days non-stop until all that meat's frozen so if we're gonna get chicken and they need to thaw out and keep it cool or something I could put it in here and just run the generator overnight we also have that little refrigerator up there that still works now it's full of it's, we're using it kind of like a cabinet right now so we'd have to empty all that if we ever gonna use it whereas this one we'll get it cleaned up we could use it overnight and just run the generator now the way i run the generator is i don't plug everything into the generator i plug the battery chargers into the generator let the generator charge or the battery chargers charge the batteries and i continue just to run off the inverter the reason i do that is if the generator dies in the middle of the night we're not at risk of the freezer shutting off because the inverter is still pulling from the batteries we could probably run off the batteries all night long I just don't like stressing the batteries that much so let's say I go to sleep at nine o'clock the generator dies at midnight for whatever reason well I'm up in five hours the freezer or the house could still run off batteries for five hours when I get up in the morning I can figure out what's wrong with the generator and turn it back on so that's what we would do is just if we're gonna run the refrigerator turn the generator on for that night there's a uh, some things that need to be fixed and I don't know how big of a deal it is that we get it fixed. She said that this is rotting out. You can see it's kind of, that particle board is kind of dropped down. I don't think it's rotting out. I think it's what happened is it's so heavy that it probably wasn't designed for this spot, this, this refrigerator. And so when they were traveling, it sunk down. 
So when we're done using this, I make sure that the electric shut off at night at the inverter. I just shut the inverter off. And then I also make sure we shut off the propane. That way there, there's no risk of fire or anything. I wish we'd have learned all this before her son came down here. I know it was pretty inconvenient for him trying to figure out how to, to live the way we had it set up. But we weren't sure what was working. We bought it and like I think two days later he was here. So only thing that we could really do was clean this thing really. Not really good actually. Just as good as we could so he could move in and we washed it. It came with blankets and sheets and all kinds of stuff. So we washed all that. So we just didn't have a lot of time to get it all done. But she has spent an enormous amount of time in here. Carolyn has. I think she's actually going to move in. So. so I'm pretty excited to be back in here and get, getting it cleaned up. So if you click this up next box, take you to a video where it's talking about candy lids. So I hope I can inspire you to improve your dreams so you can live your dreams. Thanks for watching.